Hey, Coach Kyle here, and I'm not sure if I'm ever going to publish this video, but I kind of wanted to talk about taking a break and almost giving up. <laughs> but it is mid-August, and I've been training for the last two, three months for a mid-September marathon, one that I've completed twice and gone under three hours twice at. And training, training, training throughout this record hot summer as we prep for a baby, our first baby kid coming in to the world. And I decided to not do the marathon. And I'm not sad about it, <laughs> actually, which is surprising to me. But I had not planned on DNSing, did not starting the marathon. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I got back from crewing my friend at his last man standing ultra. I got back and decided I didn't feel like running. Now, I went out and ran three miles a few times, but I was not training and I'm, I'm currently couldn't care less about going out and just doing three miles whenever I feel like it. And I just decided that I didn't feel like doing the marathon. So I emailed the race director, who's a friend, and told him I'm just not into it. I got so much going on, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I don't even have the kid yet, but I'm feeling just overwhelmed, out of whack. Over the last two, maybe three months, I haven't been doing as good a job with my meditation, journaling, gratitude practice, and my schedule's been out of whack. So work has been a little more challenging just because I haven't been able to get in that flow quite as well. And I feel like I just need a break. And something I told one of my runners recently is that when you decide not to run for a good reason, for a reason that will better you, rejuvenate you with the rest, that's a right, that's a good positive decision. If you skip a run because you just don't feel like it and you're probably gonna maybe regret it later, that's the wrong way to make those decisions about not doing something. I told my runner, it's okay if it'll leave you better. And we were just talking about a single training run, but couldn't shake it. And I feel like that's what I'm doing with this marathon is I think bowing out. And I'm, I don't just want to do it for fun. I don't think I would enjoy just going and running it, which yeah, I thought about it. Uh, I'm really going to miss out on getting those free pair of Gooder glasses because I need a new pair. <laughs> so that's my biggest disappointment. I feel like I can just go out and run here and there. I don't have to care about walking or doing three miles or nine miles or hitting certain paces. During a period of rest, I often tell my clients after a marathon or a race that it's good to rest, but go run when you feel like you're ready for a run. Not when you feel like you need to run to get the miles in, whatever, keep your streak. But if you wait until you feel like you're up for a run, you wanna go run, that's a good time to run. So I think that I'll just keep doing this for a bit and I'm hoping to look forward to <laughs> getting back into real workouts. I'd been planning on not doing another marathon after this one, so that could have been my last marathon this summer, this spring. Could have been my last one for a while, which is fine. I was planning on kind of focusing on half marathons for the next few years, and I kind of thought about, hmm, got my half PR, could I get a 5K PR? Wouldn't require much training, much volume, I mean, as compared to running 60 to 80 mile marathon weeks. So I thought about maybe going on, trying to go under five in the mile. I thought about going for that 5K PR. We'll see, but it's hard to kind of, I've never planned ahead and decided to not do a race this far in advance. <laughs> it's kind of strange, but I don't feel like I'm disappointed and I don't feel like I gave up for the wrong reason. I think that having an extra month of lower volume running before the baby comes, I think I'll be glad I did. And who cares? It's just a marathon. You know, if I decide four weeks in advance to not do it, those four weeks look different. And who cares? <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. Like, oh yeah, it's fun to do, but like my life a year from now, I think will not be different if I did or did not do the marathon. And actually it'll probably be better because I'll have an extra month to get back into my habits, my good habits. You know, they take activation energy to do, motivation, empathy with your future self. It takes that to get over the resistance of meditating and journaling. But that's stuff that makes you better and it's worth the effort. And if there's one thing I've learned in the last few years of really becoming who I want to become, is that the things that make you better don't just happen. You need to try and practice doing those meditations, the journaling prompts, the stretching and mobility work. And you know, that's where having a counselor, coach comes into play. That's what I've hired people to help me with that. And I've been better off every time. And you know, whatever you're struggling with, 
if investing a little cash in having some accountability and motivation come in, you're gonna be glad. And if it's with your running, here I am. <laughs> and if it's with your mental health or your nutrition, there are people there, people that will help you with that. So don't wish, don't not make that decision and wish you would have six months from now. Make the decision now and be better off in six months.